Hi, this is Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation Podcast. This podcast isn't some magic trick about how to work less. Instead, it's about how to really enjoy the work that you do and to enjoy your vacation time. Hi, I'm Sean D'Souza, and you're listening to the Three Month Vacation. In the last episode, we looked at how to stand out when your competition is already outstanding, and we have a three-part series. In the first part, we looked at personality and how your quirks, your likes, and your dislikes really make a big difference. In this episode, we're going to look at the identification of a problem. So what is this identification of a problem all about? And why is it so important when you just want to stand out? Let's go into the world of Zappos.com. When you look at a company like Zappos.com, it's easy to label them as an online shoe company. After all, that's what it was set up to be. In 1998, Zappos.com founder Nick Swinburne, he couldn't find the shoes that he wanted. Despite being in a big city like San Francisco, he ran into a series of dead ends when it came to shoes. He'd find the right style, but not the right color. If he found the right color, then the size would be all wrong. He spent a solid hour looking for shoes, but ended up going home frustrated with his experience. That's when he decided to start a shoe company online. Zappos.com wasn't an instant success. No one wanted to invest in a company that sold shoes online. People like to try their shoes on before they buy it. That was the general reasoning. And yet, even at that point in time, and we're talking about the year 1998, one in 20 shoes was being sold by mail order. So there was a market. But could they tap into the $40 billion shoe market in the U.S.? Offline retailers were already doing an outstanding job. Why would a client go online to buy a product from a relatively unknown company, even if they were offering color, choice, and size? The answer lay in the understanding of the problem. Zappos.com understood the risk of buying shoes online. They realized that the clients would be hesitant they also realized that it wasn't enough to just offer a money-back guarantee. The real problem wasn't that clients wanted their money back. The real problem was that if the shoes weren't suitable, the clients could easily return the shoes without having to pay to ship them back. To this day, all you have to do is print a label from their site, put it on any cardboard box, and drop it off at a UPS store. The two-way shipping guarantee was only a small piece of the entire Zappos experience. But from a client's point of view, it was a very important one. Understanding the problem that you're solving for the client allows you to stand out when the competition is already outstanding. You could potter around for ages and still run a decent business. Even the most average business owner can make a tidy profit without standing out from the competition in any way. But the moment you enter an arena where you're up against big odds, it's important to figure out the real issue. And we're not talking about issues, just one issue. It's just the hairiest issue that your clients face. And that's what Airbnb found out when they ran into Barry Manilow's drummer. Today, Airbnb is valued at an eye-watering $30 billion. But back in 2008, they were just three guys trying desperately to keep their company afloat. It's not like they weren't enterprising. 
it's not like they shirked hard work. Even so, the founders of Airbnb saw their business as a bed and breakfast company. Then Barry Manilow's drummer came along. He was on tour and didn't want to stay in a bed and breakfast. He decided to rent the entire apartment on our website while he was on tour, CEO of Airbnb Brian Chesky said. Now that idea ran counter to the company's bed and breakfast idea, but it opened their eyes to the company's possibilities. Before, the host had to be in the apartment with the guest. You couldn't provide breakfast otherwise. Yet now when you think about it, it's so silly. And that is the problem that Barry Manilow's drummer pointed out to Airbnb. When Renuka and I travel on vacation, we like our space. We first used Airbnb when we traveled to Portugal in 2014. I've had a perennial problem with hotel rooms. I wake up early, which is a lot earlier than Renuka, and I cannot tell you how many times I have been awake in bed with my iPad buying random things off the internet. Even if I do escape from the room, I end up in the lobby or on the street. I end up at cafes that are still not ready to open, at breakfast areas that get bugged with me sitting down at their tables. The moment I discovered I could rent an entire apartment or house, it was like a dream come true. I could wake up in the morning, head to another room and paint. I could whip up a coffee, I could watch a movie, and that's what Airbnb did for me. It solved a very important problem, both for me and for Barry Manilow's drummer. When the competition is outstanding, you need to understand the underlying problem. We think that we're clear about the underlying problem, but we're almost always wrong. Airbnb was wrong, Zappos was wrong, and thousands, even tens of thousands of companies have found that the client thought differently from them. When you think of Domino's Pizza, you probably think of the slogan, 30 minutes or it's free. And the reason why they succeeded is because they understood or someone made them understand the real problem. And the real problem was the delivery, not the pizza, not the taste of the pizza, nothing of the sort. It was actually the delivery. They understood the problem. And at Psychotactics, we've had to work this out as well. When we started the article writing course, we thought that we were teaching clients to write articles. But that's not what they sign up for. Their problem is different. They don't want to learn to write articles. They don't need to learn to write articles. The only reason they go through the cumbersome task of learning is because they want to attract clients. And when you go to the article writing course page, the headline says it all. It says, how to stop knocking on clients' doors and get them to call you instead. Again, with other products like the pre-sale book that we just sold, we had to dig to find the problem. So what was the problem? The problem is one of putting in all the effort and then finding that it was all time wasted and energy wasted. So the headline says, what if you put in all the time and effort to create a product to sell, but then no one buys? What if you're a nobody? How do you sell products and services when you're a nobody? And this is the real problem that's affecting people. They don't want to know about pre-sale. They don't want to know about headlines. They don't want to know about article writing. They want their problem solved and you have to figure out the problem. So this brings us to the all important question, which is how do we know what problem we are solving? How do we know what problem we need to solve? And the answer lies in the mind of Barry Manilow's drummer. To find the problem, you don't need to sit at your desk and brainstorm the issue with yourself or with your team. What you need to do is to find a client. 
just like Airbnb had Barry Manilow's drummer, that was a client. Not just any client, but someone who's already feeling the pain. Someone who's waited for pizza for well over an hour. Someone who is stuck in bed at 6 o'clock buying everything on the internet. Someone who wanted to buy shoes online, but then didn't want to pay to ship them back to the supplier. So this is what you've got to do. You've got to go out there and find a client with the problem. But what if you don't have clients? It doesn't matter. We live in an online world and if you were to slip into a forum or on Facebook, you would find dozens of people who are unhappy with a service or a product. If you're writing a book, you can go to similar types of books on Amazon and someone will be complaining about what's missing in that book. No matter how outstanding the competition, there will always be a flaw. Your job is to find a client who will tell you exactly the problem they're facing. Or you can go and find someone who's been ranting and raving, and they will tell you for sure what they would like to see. In a previous episode, we talked about Kathy Sierra and how she wrote her book, which then became a bestseller. Now, at that stage, the competition was already daunting, but there was a flaw, and it was a big one. Sierra found that the readers weren't getting to the end of the book, and so they redesigned their book in a way that would work for the readers. And when we get to this point, it might seem exciting to do a lot of research. You might want to find out all the problems the clients have. Or worse, you might feel the need to debate which one is best. And here's news for you. You don't need the best problem to sell a product. You don't need many problems either. You just need one problem. Work with that one and you'll start to stand out just a little bit. Over the weeks and months, clients will talk to you and you'll get a chance to tweak your message. Your message needn't be perfect right at this moment. All it needs to do is to set you out from the crowd. And not even in a big way, but in a little way. Over time, you can tweak a bit here and a bit there. And that's what we do anyway. We run with what we have and clients buy into products and services. And later, much later, when we have the time, the energy and the feedback, we change the message we make it stronger. The difference between failure and success is pretty fragile. If you don't understand what problem you're solving, your client will never take the trouble to move across. And then you're stuck in a world of discounting. You're stuck in a world of endless work. And we don't want that, do we? So the best thing you can do for yourself is to find a client. To find a client who has a bunch of problems but is willing to tell you their biggest problem. And when they tell you that biggest problem, you are able to take that and solve that problem. Put that on your sales page, put that in your brochures, put that in your speech. And you will find that clients will then respond to that biggest problem. So let's summarize what we've learned today. The first thing is that we don't really know what problem we're solving. We think we know, but often we're off the mark. We saw that with Airbnb. They didn't really know what problem they were solving. They just wanted to provide bed and breakfast, just space for bed and breakfast. And then a client came along and told them what problem they really should be solving. And we found this at Psychotactics as well. A client always puts us back on course as long as we're asking. So what you've got to do is go out there and find people who want their problem solved. And then instead of trying to research and figure out which is the best problem and should we use this one or should we use that one, you just pick one, pick their biggest problem. And how do you pick one? You ask the client. They will tell you. You don't have to do any guesswork. They will tell you what is their biggest problem, why it's a problem, and they will even tell you how to solve it. And that's what is going to make you stand out in the marketplace. 
Remember, there are a lot of article writing courses out there. Ours is probably one of the most expensive. It's one of the toughest. We still get clients across. Why is this the case? Sure, it's a good course. Sure, there's good training. But also, the clients identify with that headline. They identify with the problem. And if your product or service doesn't get that problem across, then you're just spinning around. Remember, you're not just selling a website. You're not just selling a course. You're not just selling a membership site. You're solving a specific problem. But you got to know what that problem is. And your client will tell you what that problem is. So go out there, find a client or find someone on a forum, do the groundwork, and you'll find that your business starts to stand out from the rest. In a group of outstanding people, in a group of outstanding companies, you will start to stand out. So what's the one thing you can do today? The one thing that you can do today is go to your copy of the Brain Audit, open it and look for the chapter on Target Profile. And in Target Profile, you get this understanding of what you need to ask the client. You know, the problems that they have, which is the biggest problem. And when you do that, you will get that feedback. And that's the kind of information that you have to put on all your sites and your brochures and everything else. It's very frustrating to do this target profile interview. Most people, they wait and they wait and they wait. And they would rather write the sales page or the landing page themselves. But I can tell you it's a mistake. So go find the client. Ask them the questions. And that's the one thing you can do. And that brings us to the end of this podcast. Now, this was a three-part podcast. It's about how to stand out in a space where everybody is already outstanding. In the first part, we looked at how you could use your personality, the likes, the dislikes, the quirks. In this one, we looked at finding the exact problem. In the next one, we're going to look at superpowers. The superpowers are very cool. It's like having x-ray vision. We'll find out in the next one. But let's wrap up this one and let's find out what's happening in Psychotactics land. So what's happening in Psychotactics land? Well, we were away in Australia for two weeks and we told everyone it was a work trip. And how do you know it's a work trip? It's because we check email. Because on a vacation, we don't check email. We don't get on the internet. I mean, I might get on Facebook for a little while, but not a lot. And that's how you know it's a work trip because we were checking email the whole time we were there. The headline course was still going on. I couldn't just say, okay, I'm going on vacation. You guys look after yourself. So yes, we went and we had our usual food, but this time, especially after that trip to India, we've been looking for different types of food. And we found a great place near Byron Bay. And this is the Federal Doma Cafe. And I don't know if you're in that area, but if you are, they have a great tofu agedashi soup. It sounds pretty boring, tofu, but this stuff was delicious. I had it probably three days in a row, including the day that we had to leave. And we almost got late to get to Surfers Paradise, which is where I was speaking. I was speaking at the Mantra Legends Hotel, for the We Are Podcast community. And yes, I'll be speaking next year as well. So if you'd like to come to We Are Podcast and learn about podcasting, well, that's next year. I think it's in November. So check that out at wearepodcast.com. I want to thank Ron Vaz for hosting it. I stayed up very late. I stayed up like 12.30, 1 o'clock at night, and I was up again at 5.30. I had so many discussions with other speakers, with other participants. And you know, this is what I really like about workshops and conferences is that you have to travel, you have to get out of your house, you have to get out of your office and you have to disrupt your life and you have to pay money to disrupt your life. And in that disruption, there is 
silence while traveling and there is thought and I don't know but a lot of those conversations were very useful to me very useful to realize why we're doing what we're doing and I want to cover this in a future podcast so I won't say too much but just so you know it was a great trip work trip great trip still tired from that trip but that's it What's happening on the product front? Well, we sold the pre-sale. It was only available for three days. It's gone now. If you missed it, you have to wait until 2017. What's happening next is we're going to have the first 50 words course next year. And you're going to learn how to start up an article. Most people struggle so much to start up an article. I'm going to show you how to start up an article. So that's somewhere next year, but we'll start selling seats and I'll give you more details about that later. 5000 BC, that's where you want to be. Once you've read the Brain Audit, of course, read the Brain Audit, join us in 5000 BC. And of course, for part three of this episode on how to stand out when your competition is already outstanding. That's me from Psychotactics Land. Bye for now. Bye for now.